What is going on guys? Stefan here, SNE's Garage. In today's video, we are going to be checking out the V Diag Tool BT300, which is an automotive battery tester, but it won't just work for cars, it'll work for motorcycles, it'll work for boats, it'll check your battery, it'll check your starter, and it'll check your alternator. So let's go ahead, rip right into this. <laughs> So the timing on this could not be more perfect because we actually just upgraded to an Optima yellow top battery here in our Lexus GSF. And I do just happen to have the old AC Delco battery that we removed out of it. Now the reason that I replaced the battery is because after five to 10 minutes of listening to the radio in that car with the engine off, the battery would be dead enough to not start the car. Um, so just going on a hunch and, and being in the field, uh, knowing that a battery should last a little bit more than, than 10 minutes uh, with a mild, uh, you know, draw like that coming from the stereo, I figured it was time to replace it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to crack open this BT300 here and we're going to start by testing uh, the old battery here out of our Lexus and we're going to show you exactly how to do it. All right, so let's uh, let's start off here by opening this guy up. Now, I have had this opened already and I have used it before, but just for the sake of the video, I threw it back in the box. So it is packaged very nicely. It does come with a user manual, but we're men, we don't use manuals. And it comes with the unit itself. And a little cord here, um, it looks like a USB-C to a regular USB to go ahead and transfer data. You can transfer the data from this device and print it onto a computer for if you're using this in a shop in a professional uh, way or if maybe you're a mobile mechanic and you wanted to print something out for a customer or something like that. So it is very versatile in what you can do with it and how you can use it. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug it into our battery here with these terminals, positive and negative. The unit does not have an internal battery, so it is strictly powered by the battery that you are trying to test. So if you have a completely dead battery, obviously the unit is not going to function. So you'll see here, we went ahead and plugged it in and you're gonna see your startup menu. You have car, motorcycle, waveform, setup, print and review. So this is a car battery. So we're gonna go ahead and select car. It is out of the vehicle. If it was in the vehicle, you would select in the vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and select out of vehicle. This is a regular flooded battery and it has a 700 cold cranking amp rating. So we're gonna go ahead and select CCA and we're gonna test it at 700 amps. And let's just test it and see what it has to say. So right now this is testing as a good battery. You'll see it has 613 cold cranking amps of the 700 that it is rated at. And the internal resistance is at 4.15 mega ohms. And right now it's sitting at right around 12.5 volts. Now a perfectly charged uh, 12 volt battery will be sitting at 12.6. So it is a little bit discharged, but that is to be expected being that the battery has not been in the car or maintained by the alternator. So this battery was actually still uh, relatively good, but I don't know, maybe it just wasn't up to the task with the stereo that's in this car. Uh, but let's go ahead, we're gonna pop the hood on the Lexus and I wanna test the Optima yellow top that's in there and see just how much more cold cranking amps it has than this regular flooded lead acid battery. All right guys, so we are now connected to the Optima yellow top that is in our Lexus at this moment. So we're gonna go ahead and again, select car. This time we're gonna select in vehicle and we're gonna go to battery test. Now, what it wants you to do here is turn on the headlights for 10 seconds and then turn them off. And the reasoning behind that is it wants you to deplete which, what is known as the surface charge that may be in the battery. If you had your battery hooked up to a battery tender like we did, or if you just drove the car and the alternator was just charging the battery, the battery is gonna have what's known as a surface charge, which can give you a false good reading. So we're gonna go ahead, flick the lights on for 10 seconds, turn them off, and then we're gonna run our test. Okay. 
Now let's go ahead. It's going to be an AGM spiral, cold cranking amps, and this is a 750 cold cranking amp battery. I'm just going to run its test. Wow. You'll see we are at a 100% state of charge with this battery. Of the 750 cold cranking amps that it's rated at, it is currently testing at 950, so it's able to put out more than it's rated for. And if you'll notice, the internal resistance is almost half of what a regular lead-acid battery is. And that is one of the great things about AGM batteries and spiral batteries at that is they have a very low internal resistance. So they can deliver more power longer because of that, because resistance hinders the flow of electrons. So now we're under the hood of our 2013 Mustang GT, and just for conversation's sake, I want to test this battery too, just because I'm curious. We've had this battery marinating here on a battery tender for the better part of a month, because we haven't driven the car since. So I'm just going to go ahead and unplug this battery tender, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to run the same exact test. This is in-vehicle, battery test. We don't have a surface charge, so I'm going to go ahead and select OK. This is a regular flooded, and it is in cold cranking amps. Now, unfortunately, with this battery tester here, it only goes in increments of 50 cold cranking amps. Um, so if your battery is like a 725, or in this case, a 590, um, I personally would go to the next step up. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to test this as if it was a 600 cold cranking amp battery, and we're going to go ahead and let this test. So right now it is sitting at 71% state of charge and at 12.2 volts. And it only has 430 of the 600 cold cranking amps that it should have. So we're actually going to hook this up to the actual battery tester because, or a charger because it appears that the tender is not really doing its job. That's actually, that's kind of low. And the internal resistance on this battery is a little high as well. All right, guys, so now that we've tested three different batteries with this thing, we went ahead and we tested the Optima Yellow Top in my Lexus. We tested the battery that came out of my Lexus. And then, like you saw, we tested the battery in the Mustang. Figured I'd bring you outside and show you just how to use the BT300 here uh, to test the alternator and the starter of your vehicle. So we're going to do that here on our 275,000 mile Wrangler. So we're going to go ahead and connect the leads, positive to positive and negative to negative, like so. Okay, and we're going to let it power up. We're going to then go ahead and go to car. We are going to do in vehicle, and then we're going to go to cranking test. So please turn off engine before pressing OK to enter the test. So let me just point you guys down here so you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and select OK, and then we're going to go ahead and start the Jeep. show you it's going to show you the time that it took for it to crank so 2704 so 2704 milliseconds the maximum voltage was 14.87 and the minimum that it dropped to while cranking was 9.75 and it came back as normal all right so the next thing we're going to show you here is how to use the bt300 to go ahead and test your alternator so again we're going to select car we're going to go to in vehicle and we are going to go to charging test. So we're going to go ahead and let it test the alternator at idle. And then it's going to ask us to go ahead and rev the car up to 2,500 RPM. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my J scan in really quick, raise the RPM to 2,500 and then we're going to select OK. Select OK.
and you're going to see that it comes back as normal. We're charging with no load at 13.97 volts and at 2500 RPM we are at 14.06. Now one last thing that I want to show you here with the alternator here is if we go to waveform. And what this will show you is what's known as the ripple of the alternator. An alternator by design creates AC voltage because it's realistically it's a generator. It alternates current. It creates AC current. But what you have inside of it is what's known as the diode trio and that rectifies the voltage to be DC voltage. And if that is failing, some AT AC voltage can bleed through and cause all kinds of weird problems with your car. So what's pretty cool is this is actually showing us what our ripple looks like and it's a nice flat line. If we had an issue with the diode trio in our alternator, you would see a, a large, a very large ripple. Uh, so this is also another great way to test your electrical system. Uh, just because your alternator is putting out voltage does not mean that it's putting out the correct voltage. All right, so one of the last things I wanted to show you here with this thing is if you went to review here, you can review your last test results, which was the, um, I want to say this was the Mustang. Yeah, 12.2 volts. Um, and you can also review a saved waveform if you have a saved waveform. Uh, so this is something that I must have saved a little while ago. I don't remember on what car this was, but we were just toying with it, checking the ripple out. You can see we had a little a little bit of a ripple there in the beginning, but then it evened out. So we're gonna go ahead and exit that. Exit that, and then you can go ahead and print. Now you have to upload these results to your computer with that cable, and then you can go ahead and print it. And like I said, that's really a great feature for if say you're a mobile mechanic or you're using this in a professional manner at some sort of a shop and you need to print something out to show your customer, that is an awesome feature. So this thing is going to be great for a DIY mechanic, somebody that's gonna be working out of their garage on their own stuff, or even if you're gonna be, like I said earlier, a mobile mechanic and you need something that's gonna be relatively cheap but still work well enough for you to get by. It'll help you diagnose starters, it'll help you check alternators, it'll help you test batteries. Um, and I hate to use the word sell, but it's going to help you sell products to, to customers and service to customers because you'll have the proof there to show them, hey, look, it's right here, black and white. This is what you need. Um, so if this video helped you, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and drop a link to this guy in the video description below. This thing only costs 40 bucks. It's $39.99, and I think that's a great value for what it does. And uh, hopefully you guys think so too. So like I said, I'm going to leave a link to this guy down in the video description below. If you purchase from that link, it does help us grow and we do greatly appreciate it. So please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.